The role of psychopomp is an important role in many ancient mythologies. Unfortunately, it is a word that has been co-opted in recent times by people claiming to help dead loved ones cross over into some form of spirit realm or theme park for ghosts. Presumably they see themselves as a zebra crossing for souls. Since, theologically, I'm an avowed atheist, and philosophically I'm somewhere around existentialism and absurdism, if you're here for some new age spiritual crap, I'm afraid you're in the wrong place. I suggest starting with the Richard Dawkins book, The God Delusion, and going from there. But for those who want to know more about the role of psychopomps in ancient mythologies, you're probably also in the wrong place, but I'll see what I can do. In three minutes, or less. Start the clock. Psychopomp deities had the responsibility of guiding souls to the afterlife, usually amongst other duties such as messengers, beating people with clubs, and sleeping around. It wasn't always deities. At other times, it could simply be a signpost that told souls, You're now dead. Congratulations. Please go this way for an eternity of damnation, torture, and family barbecues. In more modern times, Christianity and Islam use angels and saints. In atheism, that role is filled by Richard Dawkins. Various deities guided the souls in various ways, not only in different mythologies, but also within the same mythology, because consistency was for filthy, casual religions. For instance, in ancient Greece, there were a number of psychopomps such as Hermes, Chiron, and Thanatos. Job sharing was especially common in the ancient Greek pantheon, as the gods had a considerable amount of sleeping around that they had to fit into their busy schedules. Whilst it would take far too long to list all the ways that these ancient gods booted your immortal soul to whichever afterlife had a spare fire pit for you, we can take a look at a few examples. In our last video, we mentioned that Hermes had an OAP outreach program where he dropped the souls of the dead off after their bodies had shuffled off their mortal coil. More specifically, he would drop them off with Chiron. Chiron is also known as the Ferryman, as he operated a ferry service across the river Acheron and into the underworld proper, but only if you could pay him with a gold coin that your friends or family had left in the mouth of your dead body, also known as Chiron's Obel. It's not said what he used these cons for, so in my head canon, I like to think he threw them in wishing wells, wishing for a less depressing job. Thanatos, the god of death, another Greek psychopomp. In the myth of the sneaky Theban king Sisyphus, who is a symbol for just about every office worker ever, Sisyphus managed to chain Thanatos up, and so no one could die. Which logically means that Thanatos must be present at each and every death for it to occur. Richard Dawkins also fills this role in atheism, which is why I avoid attending his lectures. Ares eventually breaks the chains binding Thanatos, because war is apparently no fun unless people are slaughtering each other for no good reason. After Thanatos killed a person, he would then collect the soul and take them to the bank of the river Acheron for Chiron to collect. He must have had some serious time management skills to be able to do all that for every person on the planet. Maybe he could help CGP Cray become more prolific. The Celts love their poetry and oral traditions. Actually, as a Celt myself, that's a big lie. There's only so many times I can read Dylan Thomas before I want to cut my eyes out. I am a big fan of oral, though. However, it is probably true that my ancestors had more positive feelings towards poetry than I do, which is why they saw Ogbias as an important psychopomp. Ogbias is seen to be an older, fatter version of Heracles clothed like him in the skin of a lion, wheeled in a club, and possessing bow and arrows. Ogmios preferred to use words rather than violence, which sounds nothing like Heracles to me, but I'm sure proper historians know some things I don't, such as how to read the writings of Lucian that describes him, or how to stay awake in lectures. He was a skilled orator, binding people to his will with his words. Images show people literally bound by their ears to his mouth using chains, which is how Pierce's tongues were invented. Honest. Ogmios would use his eloquence to convince souls to journey to the afterlife, fulfilling his duties as a psychopomp and saving him the hassle of having to leave the pub to do it. My kind of god. The Etruscans were Romans before it was cool to be Roman, and well before it was cool to just steal the Greek gods and give them new names. As such, they had their own pantheon of gods. Unfortunately, we don't know huge amounts about them, which is a shame. I would like to know what the Romans believed before they just started straight up copying Greece's homework. There are two psychopomps we know of, though, Vanth and Chiron, not to be confused with Chiron. Why bring them up if we know so little about them? Because it's thought that the Etruscans believed that when someone was dying, Chiron would come up from the underworld and smack them about with a hammer until their soul left their body, at which point he and Vanth would take them to the afterlife, where he would also smack them about with a hammer. Chiron's job is pretty boring, but Chiron had a much better deal. Who hasn't thought about taking a giant hammer and just going to town on huge swathes of people? The point is that the role of psychopomp is one that can be seen throughout ancient mythologies, We've barely scratched the surface here. Others include Anubis in ancient Egypt, the Valkyries of Norse mythology, and in more modern times, the CIA are often keen to move people on to the afterlife. Thanks for watching. Please check out my other videos, such as the one on Hermes that is somewhat related to this video, or the first in the Under Three Minutes series, where we look at the most interesting man in history, Alcibiades. Next video, we'll be looking at the afterlife of Norse mythology. It's not as straightforward as you'd think. Liked if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't, and as always, I'm Tripper, and this is Sort of Learning.